Hello and welcome along to our first ever Box to Box. Of course, joining me on the sofa, who else would it be other than the absolutely gorgeous Sophia De Stefano? How are you doing? I'm very good. I'm very excited to bring you guys the first show about football and boxing. I know. And I had quite a busy day today because I have been... Basically stealing stuff from people's gyms. Oh, stealing is quite a strong <laughs> word, Kiri. I've been ram raiding uh, Anthony Joshua's gym and he very kindly gave us these belts that, uh, Troy, you've become quite uh, attached to that one. Yeah. Yeah, so just to introduce on the sofa, we've got Kevin Mitchell. <laughs> He is joining us, and we'll be talking to him a little bit later on. The gorgeous Emma Story, and yes, uh, the robber himself, Troy Townsend. Anthony Joshua, I'm really sorry, but you won't be getting that back anytime soon. Okay, so let's take a look at what's been hitting the sporting headlines this week as we take a look at what we call our top five. England staged a magnificent comeback to beat World Cup holders Germany as manager Roy Hodgson's new breed excelled in Berlin. Germany looked to have spoiled a promising England display with goals either side of the interval, but goals from Eric Dyer. Jamie Vardy and Harry Kane ensured England took home a famous victory in Germany. Stoke goalkeeper Jack Butland has confirmed he will miss Euro 2016 after fracturing his ankle in Saturday's 3-2 victory. He will have an operation this week after hurting himself moments before conceding Germany's opener. The player was in tears as he was taken off on a stretcher. And sticking with England's theme, England manager Roy Hodgson insists Captain Wayne Rooney is still a major part of his Euro 2016 plans. Even though his side beat World Cup holders Germany without him, the Manchester United forward is sidelined with a knee injury and will be a pundit for ITV during England's game against Holland. But there's no doubt that England was the main feature in the headlines this week, but boxing wasn't far behind, was it so? It certainly wasn't, Kiri. Chris Eubank Jr. produced a dominant display to defeat Nick Blackwell to win the British middleweight title. The fight was halted in the 10th round due to a swelling of Blackwell's left eye. Blackwell then subsequently collapsed in the ring and was rushed to hospital. Everyone, obviously from box to box, wishes Nick a very speedy recovery. Another big fight of the weekend was Kel Brook stopping mandatory challenger Kevin Bizier in less than two rounds. The IBF welterweight champion produced a powerful performance. Also on that card, Olympic gold medalist Luke Campbell needed just two rounds to finish off Gary Sykes. It certainly was a busy week all round for sports. Uh, but Kevin, welcome along. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Now let's get straight down to that Nick Blackwell fight. Yeah. I mean, obviously you've been in fairly similar situations. Yeah. That is quite a shame for the sport to have something like that happen. It is. It's, it's, it's an odd sport, you know, and things happen. But like, you could say various things on uh, things could suit people saying it should have been stopped earlier. What do you think about uh, Chris Eubank going, Chris Eubank Sr., obviously going in and saying things that he said, saying don't give any more blows to the head? Yeah. Was that the right thing to do? Should he have interfered in that way? I just think he was giving good advice. I think he's been in situations where he's hurt people before mm. and it's a very tough sport, people do get hurt. And he gives good advice to, to his son, what he knew, how it made him feel when he, done, he hurt somebody. So I think he just gave him nice advice. And yeah. I thought when I, when I heard him say that, I was, I was really happy that he said that. Do you think it should have, in your opinion, do you think, because there is a bit of a debate going on at the moment, yeah. do you believe it should have been stopped earlier or was the referee and Blackpool's corner in the right position? I mean, he being, was throwing back a few punches. Yeah, wasn't being it? in the corner and being a fighter, you never give up. I've been, you've seen my face from various fights, so I didn't look far yeah. different from that. And you don't give up, you'll never give so up. So he wouldn't have wanted to be stopped no, anyway? No, never in a million years would he have wanted to be stopped, and his corner wouldn't, be, corner wouldn't have wanted it either. But you know, the referee was just letting it go. And the referee did have no idea that he was going to get hurt like that. The referee 100% wouldn't have allowed that. If he knew he was going to get hurt like that, it, it wouldn't have happened. But from a fighter's point of view, because obviously we saw Chris Eubank, he knew more perhaps the situation than maybe a referee. From yeah. your point of view, you know, were you watching it think, stop it, or were you... I'd like to oh, stop a couple of rounds, two or three rounds yeah, before. Okay, yeah. he was never, so when it, the thing is, when you're in fight side and you're taking the beating like that, unless it's an even Stevens fight and you go, mm. you go back together, but... He's never going to get nothing from it other than So more. there's no need to carry on no. the rounds anyway? No, I yeah. thought it was, it was getting more and more. Well, talking about you, yep. you were a fighter for 22 years. Yep. You were in three world title fights. You've recently retired. Yep. How hard was it? You know, the ultimate dream, you were literally one of the country's most popular boxers and you yeah. never quite reached the dream of winning that world title. Yeah. How hard was it to make the decision of retiring without achieving that goal? It killed me. But to be fair, yeah, I was in the gym one day and I was training on the bag and I wasn't enjoying dieting. I was walking out of 11 stone free. Hence, I'm now 12 stone. <laughs> I have to go down to 9 stone 9 as a joke, right? So I was thinking, I'm not enjoying it. I knew my trainer wasn't 
wasn't, I knew my trainer could tell that I wasn't enjoying it. And Tony no more. Sims. Tony mm -hmm. Sims. And um, basically, I come in on a Monday after that Friday, the Friday I really wanted to give up during training. I just said, Tony, have a chat with you. I don't fancy it no more. And it was, I had to think about it over the weekend. Normally I just do things off the spur of the moment, but it took me the whole weekend to think about it. It's been a 22 year career. It's been very hard, you know. And um, yeah, I didn't get a shot. I didn't get a win of all title, but I had fun. <laughs> Talk us through your highlights, though. What were it, you had an amazing career, and you yeah. were involved in some fight of the year contests. What, t talk us through your highlights. I won fight of the year three times. Mm -hmm. um, battles. I was, I was known for being exciting. The, the crowds. I pulled in big crowds. West Ham was always. We'll talk about me. West Ham in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely bring that up. Yeah, so it's, like, it's like nicer. You, I was always exciting. So like, hence that's why I sold out arenas and that, and people come to watch me. And I was always um, always happy with that. I've always stayed normal in my ways. And my semi highlights were as even as a kid, I won four national school board titles four years running. I was the tenth in history to ever do that. I won the senior ABAs at the early age of 18 when everyone was depressed, was saying I shouldn't have ever been in them. Then I turned professional at 18 when I was saying I was too young to turn professional at 18, which is a very young age now. I've got to turn pro more than like 24s, 25s, and I turned pro so straight away. I suppose like the Cole Jenison fight was a big night. West Ham football ground was also a good night. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about West Ham for a minute then. West Ham having the season of their lives at the yeah, moment we're could potentially okay. have Champions League football. These two literally <laughs> cause so much trouble. They can't wait for Arsenal not to have Champions League football. Yeah. As a West Ham fan, life is good right now. Yeah, we're flying. It's the best I've ever known since I've been a baby. You know, as a kid, my dad was a mad Patriot or West Ham fan, crazy yeah. on it. So as kids are growing up, it was like you, you put a t-shirt on West Ham straight away. Just used to losing as well most yeah, of the time. Yeah, that's what we was as a kid, so, and that's what it was like as a kid. Like, it was always strong. You could never, we could be two three nil up. I mean, yeah. you, you never trust us. Now as you get older and older, but now we're, we're, I think we're flying. And we're doing you're a really point. Well. You're a point of fourth, Man City. Yeah, we're doing really It is well. so achievable, and yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry about the uh, the Chelsea the, the penalty. Sorry, I will cheer you love on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We've been talking about this, Emma. Have we not been talking about this? Literally, <laughs> this girl. We'll talk about Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Emma and Troy, we will talk about Spurs in a minute. We will talk about England in a minute, but let's just talk about. <laughs> I know we, it's a good job these two at least like the same team. But for, in terms of a club, I know we're seeing greatness from Leicester. We're seeing greatness from Spurs. But actually, West Ham really are doing great stuff as oh, well. It's phenomenal. I think this season, the Premier League, it really has. I think for. A neutral football fan, or for fans of other clubs exactly, lower a down, football fan, right? it's, yeah, a football fan. It's become it's like a dream season because you've got teams who you could never have anticipated being there, thereabouts. You know, smashing it at the top of the league. Like you've mentioned, Leicester, Tottenham, West Ham. Like the the natural order of things. You know, Finally, your Man United, your Man up, City's, though. your Arsenals, your Chelsea's. Sorry, Sophia. Um, <laughs> I know. It's being, not it's, not mentioning the top. It's, it's being broken, and that's actually a really good thing to see because constant dominance mm. from the same four or five teams is no Secret good for West the game. Well. It's no yeah. good for the game. Did you say what? Secret, Secret West Ham. Well, right. <laughs> right. well, a little bit too far. Oh, with <laughs> Yeah, so I was about to say, the only way I'm going to be backing West Ham is if you can remove Arsenal from the top four. <laughs> Do you Thank think they you. can? I think they well, can. No. I I think I, like, no. either, either way, I know that I know that we're a, a big, you know, we, we want to. I realistically think I know that we love Spurs, Leicester. These guys can do it. Arsenal still are a strong team, and they are okay. They aren't where they should be, but they're certainly they're starting doing, to grind out results again, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, and they do when it counts. They they generally lose when it counts, but then they've got that little extra. Well, when it counts Well, it's going to be well. interesting to see now what happens because you know everybody's momentum is going to be a bit distorted now because we've had this international break. You know, two really big games. Um, everyone's got to kind of kind of then pick themselves up. Get Back into the routine of like the the actual running now, the final seven games. It's going to be really interesting to see how everybody responds to having had that break, and that goes for Leicester and Spurs as well exactly. as Arsenal. Now let's talk about Mark Noble, Troy. It's so it seems so unfair, and it isn't just us that say this. Mm. It is every single other journalist pundit out there. Yeah. Why is he not getting selected? And there are people that are getting selected that potentially. Wiltshire, maybe there's people out there that sh should have perhaps been left out this time. Well, I think he, he, he definitely deserves a chance. If you think of the, the, the surgence of West Ham, Mark has been pivotal behind that as well. And I think he's a, he's a, you know, a one-club man who has, has driven that club forward, as well as you know, the likes of Payet and Antonio that have done really well. I think Noble has been the one that has been there, the mainstay. Um, and he has driven that club forward. And 
you know, with the two internationals that we've just had, it would have been really good to have seen if he can pit There's his no wits at that level. There's no actual reason why, I mean, he should have at least been, this was the time, these are what friendlies are for, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, we expect exactly. to see these players. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And yeah. look at, look, you, look, you look at the England game we just had, the youth that was coming through as well, mm. they're mixed with experience, I think is a really key attribute for the Euros. For me, it's a no-lose situation. Yeah. You exactly. know, you bring him in for the two games, he might start one of them and doesn't play in the other one, that's fine. You know, you look at him like they're looking at drink water and you think to yourself, well, can he and do it at this level? And what water's got out of it. Mm. Now, as a West Ham fan, it yeah. must be, because I know we're seeing Spurs and we're seeing such greatness from other yeah. teams being allowed to come through into the England squad. As a West Ham fan, you must yeah, be He should be allowed. You know, he's so passionate. He's done so well for West Ham this season. He's, he's been unbelievable, to be fair. I think he's been, he's been the backbone of the, of the yeah. team. He's been strong every game. He gives it his all. I think it, in his passion, I think you should see that, just see that side of him. I think you'd, you'd, he deserves it, the yeah, chance. Deserves it, and it would be the same for England. I mean, I think it's immensely frustrating. It's like you know, you touched on Wiltshire there, and I don't want to necessarily go after him per se. No, exactly, him because me. everybody should have their opportunity. Yeah, but you know, Hodgson's already said that if Wiltshire can get fit before the Euros, he'll pick him, even though he hasn't kicked a ball in anger all season. And then you've got him being picked ahead of somebody like Noble, who has been phenomenal for West Ham. Yeah. I think, and I think has, being picked ahead of anybody. I think if you've I, been I out all season. About the, I, okay, so we've seen Spurs, and we'll talk about uh, the four <laughs> that really were the game, the game changer. <laughs> but is it because he's still not from a named club? Because I still think there is a mild amount of bias. If you're not from one of but, the big named clubs, yeah. you're getting case, overlooked. Why is Drinkwater in there then? Drinkwater is in on Vardy. his quality. Yeah, yeah. Vardy is so in on his quality. So what is it about Noble that's just getting I, I, overlooked? I, I really don't know, and, I, and only the England manager on and his team could answer that. I, was, because I mean, I think that's the thing. I think Hodgson's the only one that can answer it. Because I don't think anyone to get reasonably can look at it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him on the next show, yeah. We'll get him on the next uh, show. Kevin's got a word for you. <laughs> yeah. Be, be afraid, Roy. Be afraid. But, yeah, but I don't, I don't think we can use that as an excuse anymore because West Ham are in and around the, the, they the, the are, Champions League be places exactly. for, a, for a reason. They have been consistent this season, they've so played some exciting the football. Thing. You know, so why would you not look at that club and not just Nolan? You've got Creswell at left back. You've got Antonio flying down the wing. You've got very, very strong performances from England players. So exactly. English okay. Players. Well, we'll come back to this in just a minute. We've got so much more after the break. We've got an Anthony Joshua video that uh, Sophia filmed a little bit earlier on. So stick with us. We'll be back very shortly.